All right, so today uh, Stewie and I are filming his install of his uh, cargo barrier in his yeah. 150 Pro. So he's going to go through it. It's a genuine Toyota item and looks like it's uh, going to be a bit of a pain in the backside. Mm. But we'll have a look. We'll show you here. So either or, two sets of instructions, don't really matter. But it's a, it's a lot of bolting by the looks of it. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this here. But yeah, a lot of, lot of bolting down and all your step-by-step -step instructions and, and we'll have to go through it. Who knows how long it's going to take. What do they say? They say time on the front. They have an estimated fitting time of 120 minutes. So two hours. For Toyota so, Techs. For Toyota Techs. So it'll be about <laughs> four hours for us. So, all right, uh, we're going to get into it. I'll show you the, st the steps we do it. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it, but yeah, I'll just show you trim removal and bolting brackets together and It'll take about half the car to get there yeah half the car to get there that's it and then just on the table it's got everything laid out here everything you need even these pink scissors don't um, tell the wife i've got those here <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there are the brackets there and all the uh, nuts and bolts and washers so we're removing the rear tie down points for your, your luggage space. So they're a, a 10 mil bolt. We only need to remove the rear ones because the, the front ones up there, they're contained within the third row seats. Right. And during the install, we actually remove everything out of the boot. So they'll come as they are. And that's it. Flick up a little cap, one bolt in the bottom there, that removes that. So then this panel will eventually pop up once we take out this side as well. Pretty straightforward. Excuse me, my uh, words I use a lot when I'm doing stuff here. It's pretty straightforward. Well, and it's typical Toyota. They make everything look really easy on the surface, and then it gets really complicated the further in you get. Yeah, it's always a way. <laughs> then this is held down by four clips. Just pops up, and that's our foldable deck cover over the third row seats. The camper van is going to become the car storage <laughs> area today. Then our little side wings are held in by some more clips as well. Isn't it there nice you when you're working with a newer car oh. and nothing's brutal? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing breaks when you take it out. Yeah, and, and it just uh, it just comes out. Yeah, I've got a mate who's got a pretty good saying there. Uh, he's, a, he's a Nissan man, so every time I used to tell him about stuff happening with the 90, he'd, just, uh, he'd turn around and go, oh, what a feeling. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just the Toyota thing. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll get rid of all of this and put a, a decent draw system loose, in the back here. Ah, oh, nah, they're only hand tight. That's my doing when I reinstalled all after the tow bar kit. You know, you need, it needs more ugga-duggers. It does probably need a couple of ugga-duggers. It was not fastened to the specified torque. Um, let's grab a little pot here for all of our nuts and bolts that we take out. Little bit of force to pop these clips all across the bottom there. Got work done. You might want to give this a vac. Oh, yes, we, this was spotless when I put it all back together after putting the tow bar in. Where'd, where'd you go? Beach? Uh, it does look like it, doesn't it? I actually can't remember where we went. Go to Gore? No, we haven't. No? Uh, no, I did robe to Beachport. That, that's that's right. what I did. And my brother decided to throw his camp chair sure. in the back and yeah. send the sand everywhere in the yeah. feet because, yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't going in his car. <laughs> 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 All right, so we've popped our rear cover off. Now we're looking at the bolts that remove this plate here. And they are up to 12s now. Yeah, we're gonna take you on a road beach portrait. Never mind, they're still tens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it. Didn't get to do it in the 90, haven't done it in the 80. 
One day I might do it. We'll see. Yeah, we'll get you there one day. I just don't like the f idea of getting bogged and, and getting having bogged? to dig myself out. That's half the fun. Yeah, not, not with my shoulder. Did you see the photos you of me? Dig, you did a digging, I'll do the driving. How's that sound? No, digging. What do you <laughs> dig for? <laughs> the only digging I do is digging myself into holes. Well, see, when Sock and I went up to the Kurong, it was a really soft section and he got us, he got us stuck. Yeah. And all I did was I hopped in, I scraped some sand out from behind the back wheels and I reversed out. That's oh, like... Well, that's all right then. That's not too bad. I had no recovery tracks. There was no one else around and it was, the tide was uh, starting to come in. Jesus, Mick, so, setting yourself up there. Eh, I had confidence in the 80 and it did well. <laughs> I only had it down on 16 PSI too. And I still drove out of it, so. Oh, you, that low, probably, low range in the 80s is just awesome. Probably won't cut it down road beach port. <laughs> we were down to uh, 12 PSI for the most part. And um, even then, we, we got through most places. Um, but we had a vehicle with us that was towing a camper as well. Um, they ended up down at 8 PSI on our second day, um, just because the sand down there was rather soft. Um, so what happens when you go over there in summer, ish? Hot sand is soft sand. Where's that other bolt? Wheels. Um, well, it's got the. There's one on this side down here. Oh, I've got a funny feeling it's actually under the seat panel. Under that, there's two here. Yeah. On the outside of this bracket, so what's going to come out? What's it say? I am getting ahead of myself. Yep. Those. Those brackets? Those brackets first, mm -hmm. and then the seats. Um, yeah, but that vehicle ended up making it through, and then um, on our final day, I towed the camper out with this and had quite a ball. That was a, a good bit of a test run, because that was the first trip away in this car, and I was a bit... How's it go power-wise compared to the 90? Oh, it shits all over the 90. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it, so this is the, the four liter V6 in this. Um, slightly bigger engine it's the second variation after the 120 series v6 and it's it's just got so much usable power there like you put your foot down and it it just it get it get his up and goes that was the issue i found with the 90 especially on the 33s yeah yeah is that it was very slow to take off um but then that's when you need to look at re-gearing and stuff like that so yeah yeah definitely and i didn't get around to doing it. Switch sides here. Yeah. So yeah, undo these two brackets. That one and that one that was there. There is our other bolt. So the middle ones are really easy to access. They're straight down in the channel there. But this other other mm. rear bolt is tucked under our seat cushion. Mm. Down, down there for those who want to see it. So that's that's the bum cushion for the third row. So we'll take this out and collapse the seat back down again. And then we'll uh, jump into our middle row there. And undo the front ones. Yeah, remove the front ones. They've done something a little bit different with the, the third row of this car in that they've actually got a um, pretty significant sort of... Support then? Yeah, support running across the guts there. Um, 90 didn't? No, well the 90 was really easy to put drawers into, it was just mm. a flat based rear cargo area, whereas this thing's got lumps and humps everywhere you look and cables going everywhere, like we've got the rear key proximity sensor here and this thing is so So who does the drawer advanced. system for it? What are you looking at putting in it? Oh, I'm really considering um, RV storage solutions. Yep, that's, um, my, that's my wheel carrier bag. There's the, their drawers are nice, yeah, and really, they're pretty well priced. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite a fan of those, because we're in the 90 series, I actually had their um, rear cargo shelf and centre divider, mm -hmm. um, and I re removed and retained that for, with the intention of installing in this, and so I'll probably end up going down the path of having a complete system from them that's all integrated and is designed to work together rather than custom making everything like I did with the 90. Have, there's a, have you looked at the Draw Company in Melbourne? The Draw Company? Mm -hmm. Can't say Ow. I've heard of them. I will send you a link. Alrighty. 
Um, Certainly keen to hear ideas and thoughts and opinions on different company, but their draw systems are really nice. Different places, Um, because yeah, not not set in stone as to what we'll do yet. So we got four clips across the front here, four covers. Just get in here. Trying to see my lights flat at the moment, but uh, once it's charged. Does yeah. stuff all, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not going to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I gave a little bit of light. LED interior lighting was one of the first things I changed on the car. And... Oh, I did that one tight. It made such a significant difference to like how much we could actually see inside the car at night. And yeah, I don't regret doing that at all. Bit of a shout out to my mate Bailey over at Repco. then don't drop the bolts. Alrighty. Alright, seat one. Go this way. Ooh, there goes that thing. What was it? Clip that back on. Ah, uh, come off. Yeah. He told me to put it somewhere where I wouldn't hook it with stuff. Yeah, I didn't, didn't, I didn't do a very good job. Yeah, probably on your like, belt. Right. So we'll be a bit more careful with the wiring under this side. Um, with the seats, the left one's got to come out first because there's an overlap trim on the bottom of the right one. Uh, okay, yep. Cool. And we'll just lay these upside down on each other over here out of the way. Awesome. It looks like she has seen a little bit of moisture in the back there at some point in time. Yeah, but when yeah. I first did this, it was like almost covered in a. That's not bad though. Grab a some, black mouldy surface. Like grab some WD forty. That'll clean up. Yeah, do it if you do it now. While we're here, the way here's, it's done. Here's a can I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of that and a, and a rag. And oh, a rag I prepared earlier too. Yeah. That the only just, the last one I've actually just got. Leave, just leave it sitting for a little bit, just to soak it up. But yeah, so that's that's that front ridge that I was oh, talking yeah. about that yeah. a lot of the draw manufacturers have to come up with a system of fixing to that yeah. because there are there are no nut certs or welded nuts on the top line yeah. or on the back there they're only on the front where the seats actually fix into it so yeah, it's not hard to do. everyone's sort of got to come up with their own solution for that what I have been seeing is a lot of people run into issues with um, like once they put their drawers in mm-hmm. they impact on the really popular k rear door shelf yep so then they've got to come up with more solutions but that's part of part of the game isn't it yeah you might want to wipe those outer ones mate hey the outer ones no oh, i think they're going to take a little bit longer not too bad overall but it's only surface rust it's probably more so um just residue left over from the actual seat brackets because yeah, they're raw yeah. steel yeah. whereas all this is painted the other option now is to get some like um, pour 15 oh yeah or a um, anti-rust um, paint looking thing because this is another Toyota thing everything is interlaced so these have got to come out this little step trim cover here has got to come out in order for us to get this side panel off so there we are our two little bolts in there again oh, we'll get the vacuum cleaner into this as well later oh that's not our bobby pin that one's been there a while hasn't it mm, yep delicious Yum. look at no, I don't think I'm vaccinated for that. <laughs>
So we've put the template over onto the correct side, which is over here. So behind the two uh, raised panel parts and just use the hole punch or yeah, hole punch. Center punch. Center punch. Use the center punch to uh, just to mark out the holes with the template and then uh, he's gonna go drilling. Oh, I don't like so, making holes. So on this, with your drill, always a little bit of a pro tip is to put some masking tape around if you don't have a drill stop for your drill bits. So, but I might actually get it by drill stop now. That might yeah. be a good idea. And also it's just a little bit of a, like a clamp for it. See what I mean? Well, the masking tape works. Beautiful. Went a bit deep though. There you are. It's not 10 mil. No. Only about five. As easy as that. That way you're not going straight through and uh, all sorted, not a problem. Now we'll make some bigger holes. So then we set it up to a 20 mil hole saw. Uh, so it says here, care must be taken not to penetrate any other panel as the stop cannot be used, but you will. We so, use masking tape for that. The trouble is, our centre bit is significantly longer than 10 mil. Yep, that's right. So what you do is you put your masking tape just by the teeth here. Yep. Yeah, but I don't know how deep that's going to go into anything. I can see daylight. That's ideal. It's only going to be the fuel tank. Yeah, it's all right. It's for extra ventilation, mate. <laughs> Stop me from getting those pesky air bubbles. That's right. What we'll do now, when you've got the rest of the plates handy for the components in your instructions here, we've got our little black plate that sits over the top here. Overlay your plate with the appropriate bends in it, down through the top hole. A little bit of going by feel here, and then you screw that into our large hole in the center there. So then we can lift our plate up. It's going to be hard to see down through that hole if you want to try and get a shot. Yes. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I can see it lined up. You sort of just yep. see the threads down the bottom there. So we can then put our bolt and washer assemblies in there to fix that there temporarily. And then we can put our larger fixing bolt in. A couple of different holes to try and shoot through there. There we go. So you can see I'm pushing on my plate underneath. And that's going to hold that there. Same process with the front one. Down through our rubber grommet. It's got a nice grease seal around it. And there, finger tight. Got one bracket there. There we go, we've got those two out of the way now. We can start marking up for our next 
template to go across there. So more we'll, templates and more drilling. We'll cut that one out, punch and drill that. And we'll be back with you shortly. So pretty much, that's all your bracketry done on this side. So up to there, there's another plate bind here to support this one to come out, so that can bolt in at the front there. Now I made a few holes and things drilled and then uh, interior trim. You have a hole drilled up the top for that one just below the window and this is the bolt hole for the one down lower. And that's it, that can go in now and then it'll just be the other side. So, anything to say other than that? The estimated time frame is a lie. <laughs> it's a lie, yeah. 120 minutes? No, no, it's not 120 minutes, not at all. We've been going, to, what, we've been going since 10, 30, maybe? No, nah, probably, we've been really going since Maybe quarter past 11. Quarter past 11, maybe, yeah. So we stopped for lunch in there as well, but. Well, lunch is only half an hour. Quarter to four at the moment. Yeah, so. No, it's gonna take way too long to, uh, to film the rest of it. <laughs> Definitely a so, day. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you, show you that side <laughs> and then we'll cut back to when it's done and the uh, cargo barrier's in. How you going, guys? So, uh, yeah, Stuart's finished putting in his uh, cargo barrier. I'm just gonna go over it now and show you the final product. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward, as I like to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is all uh, this is all set up in here now. I so said when we drilled those holes in the trims, um, it's drilled through there and there, and then your brackets just come out and it's all bolted in. So, looks pretty good. So, what's your thoughts? Is it uh, is it is it handy? Have you used it much yet? Well, I'd never put it in with the intention of using it, yeah. but uh, it's there as a just-in-case item. Yep. Um, yeah, a, lo a lot more peace of mind now, loading up the back of the car when we go camping, that everything's going to stay behind the seats and keep the kids and stuff safe, so... That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, the main goal. But, um, I mean, it does leave some odd holes where the curtain airbags will deploy, so yeah, yeah. I need to come up with a solution to fill those in a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately that's just the design. The design yeah. with the uh, genuine Toyota ones there, that it's got this big cutout just here. But I'm almost this. thinking like a little bit of the, the flexible rope cargo netting on a, a large elastic strap. Yeah, that'll work. Just you could even go, to... you could even probably go off the handles. Like yeah. hook onto there and off the handles. Yeah. And just come across like that. And just you, just, you can just cut one down. The, mm. the small yeah. items like yeah. pillows and bags. Yep, yep. But something else. Even one of those like, um, I reckon those trailer yeah, cargo yeah, nets. That'd be but just cut it down because they are individually hooked around the place. Yeah. If you just cut one down to size. That'll be the go, I reckon. Yeah. Um, um, you want to chuck your cargo blind in so we can see that? Absolutely. Well, so. That is um, something that I quite like about the Toyota product is that it's still compatible with the rear cargo blind. So yeah, we're going to chuck this in. This is a good thing, right? See, with the 90s, it's very hard to find a cargo blind if you can find one at all. So you need to just hook up one other side. Well, these ones still fit through there. Still fit through there. A little bit hard bit one fiddly. handed. Yeah, that's right. It's the other end, I guess. And... It may smooth out, but they're still compatible with the, yep. the cargo barrier. Obviously, it's not as neat as they do sit, but. Yeah, obviously these would sit up a bit on there and lock it all in. But Keeps prying yeah, eyes good. out of anything valuable you've got in the back. Yeah, it's handy, isn't it? Well, that just kind of sits up on, on here or is it kind of just rests? That? Just rests on that? Rests on that edge there. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it gives you an idea, guys, of putting the uh, cargo barrier in the old 150. And, and yeah, just that gap there. So I reckon, yeah, just like a tra like a six by four cargo net for a trailer, just cut it down so you can extend the straps and hook it around here and come down onto the bottom there, I reckon. Um, I reckon you better do something like that. 
So beautiful. Easy. Happy days. Happy the car a bit more usable. Yeah. Yeah, as easy as that. So no worries. Excellent. Anything else you want to add? What's your plans with it? With the uh, the car long term? Yeah, long term. Uh, should become the family tourer. So there's a very long and extensive list of modifications to be done. Um, it's just a, a matter of prioritising and building it up as we go. That's it. And you're just going to, obviously, first mod, uh, Stewie was talking about is doing his roof rack. Yeah, yeah, we'll look at switching out the, um, the factory roof rails for a, um, a platform of some description. Utilise the roof space a little more. He hasn't decided what he's going with yet, so... Yeah, there are a look. couple of contenders. So let's do a little bit of a surf around the car here. Give you an idea, so she is pretty stock except for the uh, the recovery points down there. And that was the uh, the first essential modification. Yeah. Before any off-road trip, you need to have a, a safe means of getting yourself unstuck. So it's a nice blank canvas to start with, and you make it your own, which is what you want to do. Or if you're like me, I buy it half done, and then try and make it my own, which I guess is cheaper doing it that way. <laughs> I said, I said the 90 was a... It is a nice 90, incentive 90 when it comes with a couple well. of mods. Yeah. So easy as guys. All right. Excellent. Take All it easy. Toyota stuff is DIY. Yeah. Just uh, allow a lot longer. Yeah, so we say <laughs> triple the time. So it was an, an, Absolutely. So it was two hours, so we're going to say six if you're doing it by yourself. Yeah, so. definitely. But no worries, guys. All right, have a good one, and we'll catch you in the next video.